Hey, um, so I am the owner of Cacti Fanatici, which is an independent plant tissue culture company um, slash home business. Um, and today I'm just going to kind of talk about, um, you know, plant tissue culture, home applications, um, and things that you can maybe do um, to create a business, um, either directly related to plant tissue culture or other services that are, are similar. Um, for our company, we specialize in um, ornamental cactus um, and endangered species, um, specifically also fruit trees um, from um, more exotic areas. Um, so one of the first things I kind of wanted to address um, is, you know, what are some of the factors for establishing a successful tissue culture venture? Um, so, I mean, ex an example, first off, I can start with my company. Um, so one of the main things for, you know, becoming successful is kind of finding the market first, right? Um, it's always good to have a passion in the plant that you're doing and be very knowledgeable about its growth patterns. Um, and then two, knowing the market that you're actually able to sell them to. Um, sometimes, you know, it's really easy to get super interested into tissue culture plants, but for a business sense, you have to have a, a market that you're kind of attacking, right? Um, and, and there's two main markets that people usually go for is either the ornamentals, you know, that you can plant that look nice and they're staring at. Um, and then the other is more for uh, medicinal plants or utility plants, you know, like vegetables and things like that. Um, so, yeah, so for the first one, um, you know, as an example, um, identifying like the house plant market, right? So figuring out the plants that um, you see at Home Depot or that you know of that there's a culture behind it of people collecting those plants. Um, you're not gonna be able to see too well inside here, um, but this is just an example. An example. Um, this is a Monstera Thai constellation. Um, a single node cut that's thick um, can range anywhere from $150 to $250 with no leaves on it. Um, so by getting these into culture and multiplying them out, you know, I, I started with one. I now have about 30 of these. Um, and they're all um, multiplying out as well. Um, so that kind of shows you the potential of money that you could make in like a smaller niche market, um, especially with house plants. Um, there's so many different types that are very high value, exotic, or a little bit rare. So they're not as easy to find in your common stores. Um, another example, you know, would be going more into the biotech medicinal route or like supplement type of things. So, um, you know, this is another example. This is astragalus, right? This is a, a Chinese medicinal herb that's used for its roots mostly. You can actually use the entire plant. Um, for this project, um, we're actually growing the roots in a bioreactor um, and having the roots pretty much keep growing continuously so that we can harvest them um, and then use them for uh, certain cosmetics or, or, or nutraceuticals. Um, so those are some, you know, three different ways that you can kind of go out, um, you know, including the cosmetic route um, of using like plant tissue culture. Um, a little bit of my background, um, I used to work for a human stem cell based company and they needed to replace all of their human products pretty much with plants. Um, we were able to discover many different species that produce the same compounds that human cells produce um, And we were able to grow these plants up and harvest their cosmetic properties out of them all the way up to 200 liter reactor cell suspensions um, But don't let that kind of inhibit you of thinking it's too grand um, All the way up to cell suspension and liquid culture can all be done at home um, with the proper equipment and materials um, so it can be a lot cheaper than you think also to set up these um, type of labs in your own home. Um, you know, uh, the flow hood, instead of using a flow hood, you can use a fan filter unit. Um, there's a company called Flow Cube. So you can pretty much for about $1,500 get a HEPA laminar flow hood that's good enough for tissue culture um, and other type of microbiology. Um, so that's a great way to invest in starting yourself. Um, that's not too inhibitory, you know, compared to a giant hood that can be like five or $10,000. Um, 
Yeah, and the the range of tissue culture, you know, like I said, it expands between you know whole plants like this, um, and then actual cell suspension cultures. So making callus from these tissue cultures and then putting them into liquid culture, so that the cells can break off and be free growing in the liquid. Um, when that happens, um, you're able to get a very fast growth rate. So within five days, seven days, you can start to max out your entire growth space, um, which is very important when you're hunting for certain compounds. So going back to the biotechnology approach, um, a little bit more advanced right outside of the house market, um, you, can, you can also get jobs or start your own companies in plant biotechnology. Um, and a lot of the cells, when cell suspension, um, their metabolism actually drops down and they kind of go more into a base mode, um, which is good and bad, right? So sometimes there's not as many chemicals or components that are coming out of these cells, but because they're super um, stem cell-like, since they're meristematic cells, um, they can be manipulated. Um, there's lots of plant vaccines that are also created through tissue culture, um, you know, incorporating genetic engineering as well, you know, with the proper lab safety and, and things like that. But um, you can also be doing, you know, in a small setup um, transformation of certain plants as well. So if you know that they have high components, high, high metabolites inside of them, um, these are great candidates to maybe explore um, you know, gene expression or elicitators. So um, that's the thing is that you can manipulate the media also to get certain components to come out. Um, just like you can manipulate the media to get better growth patterns um, and a better like physiological response. Um, yeah, so like I said, you know, and as an example, you know, we were selling, you know, 20 liters of our plant tissue culture as cosmetics, they would be able to break that down and put it into lotions, into anti-aging creams, um, many different things. So it's again, establishing that market and then attacking it with the right um, plant tissue culture venture um, is a great start. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, kind of just to, not too long of a video, but just to scale into the progression, the, the future of plant tissue culture, um, it seems, you know, that a lot of the, the plant compounds that we're using and nutraceuticals are not standardized. Um, and a lot of times when you're taking things, that's not actually what's truly inside there, just because there's, it's a harder variability sometimes using wild plants. Um, so it seems like there is definitely a movement, at least in the cosmetic industry and the nutraceutical industry to maybe standardize that. And a way of doing that is actually through plant tissue culture and cell suspension culture, um, measuring proteins and metabolites um, will give us a better standardization and usefulness of plants. Um, you know, there's a old mindset that plants don't do anything. Obviously we know that's not true. Plants are responsible for almost everything. Um, and uh, you know, this is a way that we're kind of able to push plant tissue culture into more of the forefront. Um, apart from plant tissue culture also, you know, as the future, there's a bunch of side businesses that kind of kick off of that. Um, I do come kind of from the cannabis world of doing plant tissue culture, um, but another part of it that you realize that's actually missing in a lot of, um, you know, agricultural systems other than plant uh, or, you know, cannabis tissue culture um, is the molecular biology side. Um, so, you know, there's an entire business on doing the bioinformatics and being able to check these plants for their compounds, um, analytical testing. So, you know, depending on what you really are interested in, you can kind of branch off into kind of opening up a testing lab maybe, and you specialize in certain plant compounds. Um, I've seen a couple companies do that and it seems to be doing very well since they're super specialized. Um, another thing is virus testing. Um, especially like in lettuce varieties and things like that. Um, you know, people haven't realized or it hasn't come to the forefront that plant viruses are very aggressive um, and can equate for billions of dollars of loss, um, you know, in harvest. So um, if you're very interested in molecular biology, um, starting up a little testing lab, and again, there are cheaper options. Um, 
I'm a big fan of reusing. So eBay is a big, big helper when finding equipment. Um, but there are affordable options out there. You just have to be able to know how to do the work. Um, and, you know, I am obviously academically trained in environmental and plant biology. Um, but my plant tissue culture work, I'd say I completely learned out of school. Um, you know, just trial and error, you know, just try it. Um, the most important thing, I think, is learning how to read papers and not getting lost in them. Um, so just keep keep reading plant tissue culture papers and learning how to go through those material and methods and looking at the graphs to not always get lost in like this big bundle of information and just kind of distill it down to your hormone recipes, your light intensity, the temperature. Um, you know, you, you learn how to read those papers so that it's a lot easier, um, you know, to understand and manipulate, manipulate your own cultures. Um, so that's just kind of like a little quick thing, um, you know, on plant tissue culture and some ventures that you can kind of go into. Um, again, you know, we specialize more in the ornamental cactus um, and exotic fruit trees, um, but there is definitely, you know, a huge market for everybody to be inside of. Um, sometimes when you're online, you might be looking up and you're like, oh, somebody's already doing it. Don't let that inhibit you. Um, you know, there's enough for everybody. And if that's a plant that you're super passionate about, it should be the one that you work with. Um, because that passionate will show through to your customers, um, even to your social media pages. You know, it's a great way of marketing and building a small business to establish your name um, and then really specializing in something. And again, um, you might think that it, it's out of the question to go to Home Depot or to go to Lowe's or to any of these other large um, box till, re, you know, uh, retail stores. Um, but it's not, you can actually, you know, create a whole bunch of plants or try to talk with some of the district managers or something and see if, you know, they can buy from your nursery, right? You don't always have to go into detail it. Maybe it's in your bedroom, um, but you'd be surprised that you can actually whip out thousands of plants, um, out in a single room, you know, using proper tissue culture techniques. Um, and you know, sometimes they don't even want the plants to be acclimated. You can actually sell direct plant tissue culture plants. Um, and that, that's also really nice if you don't have that much space. Um, so yeah, that's a quick little video on, you know, some applications of plant tissue culture, um, different ventures that you can kind of go into. Um, but I would say we're just at the beginning of, uh, plant biotechnology. Um, it's kind of been a, an ignored science for a little bit. Um, and you can see there's a lot more money, attention and time going into, this discipline. So I definitely encourage you guys to, you know, think of ways to start your own plant tissue culture businesses. Um, and, you know, watching YouTube videos, going to extra courses, um, you know, there's a lot of, of free resources out there to be able to learn how to master your plant tissue culture skills. But in the end, you know, it's just trial and error and you just learn your hand at a tissue culture is a touch of an art form. So you'll learn the form that works best for you and just know that, um, you know, there's no one way to do something. So just because somebody says this is the way it's done, doesn't mean it's always the only way it's done. So feel free to brainstorm, adventure around and good luck. All right. Bye.